An insured property is destroyed by fire, and the insurer has an adjuster conduct an investigation. Can that adjuster waive any of the requirements or rules in the insurance policy? In Connecticut Fire Insurance Company v. Fox, the court considered that burning question. A. H. and Edith Fox owned the Firebird Motel and bought fire insurance from Connecticut Fire Insurance Company. The policy required that, in the event of a fire, a proof of loss and an inventory of destroyed property had to be submitted to Connecticut Fire within 60 days. On March 25, 1964, a fire destroyed a substantial part of the motel. Connecticut Fire referred the matter to the General Adjustment Bureau Incorporated for investigation and adjustment. The next day, Mr. Foster of General Adjustment had the Foxes sign a non-waiver agreement providing that nothing Connecticut Fire did during its investigation waived any policy condition. Moreover, no representative of Connecticut Fire had any authority to waive any of the policy's terms except in writing. Foster took statements from the Foxes about the fire. Foster then explained the claim and recovery process to them, although he said nothing about the proof of loss requirement. Foster told the Foxes to winterize and reopen the motel's undamaged units. In early May, the Foxes completed the damaged property inventory forms and submitted them to Foster, along with the construction company estimate to rebuild the fire-damaged part. Foster rejected the estimate because it lacked detail and rejected the inventory sheets disputing the damaged property's valuation. The Foxes didn't submit a proof of loss form. The time for submitting claims documentation expired about May 24th, but the next meeting between the Foxes and Foster wasn't until June 3rd. At that meeting, Foster gave the Foxes a letter allowing them until July 3rd to submit the proof of loss. Foster signed the letter for Connecticut Fire by the General Adjustment Bureau. The Foxes then sent a proof of loss and revised inventories to Connecticut Fire on June 6th. On July 7th, having heard no response from Connecticut Fire, the Foxes sued in federal court. A month later, Connecticut Fire rejected the Foxes claim for failure to submit a timely proof of loss. After a trial, the jury determined that Foster had the authority to extend the time for filing a proof of loss and awarded judgment to the Foxes. Connecticut Fire appealed to the 10th Circuit. 